Short cases are an integral part of the pediatric clinical examinations of the final MBBS exam. They test the student's ability to examine a child with the ease and accuracy of a competent intern house officer. A short case examination should be sufficiently comprehensive for the lead-in given, but directed. It should be confidently performed, quick enough to be within the confines of the examination timing, and above all, conducted kindly and with consideration for the patient and the parent. The pediatric short cases cover examination of neurological, abdominal, cardiovascular and respiratory systems, and of course, developmental and neonatal examinations. You will be tested at two stations which can be of any of these systems, and in each station you will be assessed independently by two examiners. All examiners undergo a calibration session immediately before the clinical examination commences in order to ensure consistency and fairness in examination. The time allocated for each short case is 10 minutes, so a well-prepared routine is essential. Often the examiners will provide you with a specific and a clear instruction for each short case and this instruction is generally agreed by all examiners in the initial calibration session. It is important that you listen carefully to this instruction and plan your approach appropriately. Remember that examiners themselves have assessed and examined the children just before the examination starts and without the aid of the child's notes and with a similar introduction to the one that the student receives. This means that they too have examined the child blind and thus any conflicting or questionable findings can be noted so as to maximize the suitability of the case and to assess whether the leading instruction is appropriate. You will be tested mainly on three aspects of clinical skills and they include examination techniques and their accuracy, interpretation of physical science and presentation and discussion of your findings. Improve your examination techniques by repeated and guided physical examination of children. Expose yourself to a number of children with different physical signs in each system. The most useful form of practice is to be critically assessed by a consultant and optimally by one who is an examiner. In many short cases, it is always worthwhile spending at least 20 to 30 seconds standing back and getting an overall impression of your patient and perform a good inspection of the patient and the surrounding. It is very important that you have a gentle approach to your patient even if he or she is not cooperative. Make sure that you do not upset or hurt the child. Bring enough age and gender appropriate toys to examination. Not only they are helpful in assessing development, but also they are helpful in building a good rapport with any pediatric patient. After completion of your examination, you are expected to present your examination findings. This generally includes a succinct summary of examination findings with the most likely diagnosis or a logically presented differential diagnosis. They should be relevant to the particular child you examine, so the correct interpretation of physical science is very important. Do not present a blinded list of differential diagnoses that you perhaps read in a book. Remember that you do not have to get the diagnosis absolutely correct to pass. Most examiners assess your approach to examining the child with accurate technique and work out a reasonable differential diagnosis based on your accurate interpretation of the findings. An important aspect in your presentation is the correct coinage of your findings. Do not use vague terms and try to be specific as much as you can. Try to eliminate words of uncertainty from your vocabulary. Do not fabricate physical signs and this is very unhelpful to pass the examination. If you are not sure of certain physical signs, be honest to tell it, but still try to show your ability to work out a reasonable differential diagnosis based on what you have already found. Remember, the examiners are quite capable and experienced in understanding your overall approach to the patient. Managing time is also crucial. Some examiners may give a hint if you are taking too much time and might run out of time to present your findings. Although the time that you take to examine a patient can be variable, finishing your examination in about six to seven minutes will leave a good time period of three to four minutes to present your findings and proceed with a brief discussion. Sometimes you may think that you did not perform well in your first short case, but do not get upset or be anxious because this is unhelpful for your next short case exam. Try to calm down yourself and proceed to the next station with a refreshed mind so that there's a good chance that you succeed in the next station. Remember, the key to passing exam is repeated practice. You'll be assessed on how good you are at in becoming a competent and safe intern house officer. 
If you have done your clinical training well and familiarize yourself with the commonly encountered short cases, then you are very likely to perform well in your short case examinations.